It's not just a matter of getting settled in at university. For me, and a lot of other students too, this is the first time in Dunedin itself. It's not the biggest city in the world, but I think that's one of the nice things about it. Most of the people seem pretty friendly. I suppose they're pleased to have us around again at the start of the year. And we're easy to see. There's such a lot of us. I've heard people call Dunedin a university town. I don't know whether that's true, but the university is obviously very important here. You get the feeling that you really matter. You don't just get swallowed up in the crowd like you do in the bigger cities. I was amazed to find how much goes on in Dunedin. You could be out every night, if you had the time and the money. There are all the concerts you could manage. The big ones in the town hall, or at the Regent Theatre. But a lot of smaller ones too. There are five theatres here, so there's plays running most of the time, as well as the touring shows that come round. But I'm more interested in films. Beside the Film Society, you could go to a different picture in town every night in the week. All the shops in town are within walking distance. There's a good range of big stores and a lot of little places too. And you can tell it's a university town because there's so many bookshops and students get special rates. But sometimes I just wander around to look at the old buildings. They haven't pulled down everything here to make room for offices and flats as they're quite proud of Dunedin's past. And anyway, I think the old buildings give the place a bit of character. This is my flat. A lot of us live around the campus in places like this. Usually three or four together, sharing the cooking and the cleaning and the living expenses. You don't all have to be university students either. I live here with a teacher's college student and a couple of nurses and a guy who works in a bank. Who was that? It's a good system because you get a chance to mix with other people. Although I must admit, things aren't always perfect. It's not as easy as it used to be to find a good flat. But you don't have to go flat hunting all on your own. We've got an advertising system at the student union. And there's an accommodation officer at the university who can tell you what's offering and suggest some likely places to try. You can end up with something that really feels like home for two or three years. I'm Jane Parker and I do live at home, but I don't feel cut off from the university because I go there every day and it's no distance really. In fact, nowhere in Dunedin is far from the university, so I don't have to allow for much time or cost to attend classes. It's nice to work in familiar surroundings and the family have learned to live with my study times. About 1,300 students live in the hostels, colleges and halls of residence built round the edge of campus. Knox, Carrington, Selwyn, Arana, Sarmond, Studham, St Mags and of course University College, my own. They are one of the really special things about Otago and nearly all the first years from outside Dunedin start off in one of the halls, which is what I did a couple of years ago. It's like being in a small version of the whole university, a place for lots of us taking different subjects and work and live in a community without having to do all the housekeeping. 
you get together for meals and for hops, skating trips, sports teams and lots of other activities. But we've each got our own room where you can work or relax by yourself. Every hall's got a library and places to relax. At our hall, we've got a big games room and an outdoor tennis court too. It's funny how it all grows on you after a while. You meet kids from all over New Zealand and some from overseas too. I've made really good friends already. You soon feel you belong to the place and it belongs to you. There's a kind of friendly rivalry between the colleges and I was there cheering our gang along at the swimming competitions. It doesn't really matter who wins, but there's a lot of noise and general goofiness. And everyone feels part of it. mix in with everyone else and there are senior people to help with study problems. When you're having trouble with coursework or money or boyfriends it's good to be able to go to someone who's a bit older than you who really listen and give you advice if you need it. Anyway I'm glad I'm in one of the halls. There's been some research done that shows we've got a better chance of passing the finals and I've got a feeling I'm going to need all the help I can get. When I came to university, so many years after I'd left up country high school, years of doing housework and looking after the family, what struck me was the difference between a classroom and this kind of place. Here you're more on your own, and that sort of freedom is a side of university I really enjoy. At a lecture like this, you've got to pick out the main points and take notes you can read and swat from later on. I started off trying to take down everything, and I still write more than I need to. But lectures are only one side of university study. I do a lot of work on my own, at home, or in the central library. When I first came in here, I found it a very daunting place with its thousands of books and that's not including the other special collections like the medical and law libraries. I used to waste a lot of time trying to find books. I didn't ask because I didn't want to seem ignorant, but I feel quite differently now. I've got used to managing the big catalogues and if I still have trouble locating a book or a periodical, I'll ask the reference librarians. Yes, what if you'd like to come with me? We've in trying to pursue a single theory of investment. Sorry, I'm late. That's perfectly all right. In but my courses, we have regular tutorials right, to back up the lectures. One, one theory of investment? In tutorials, well, you meet in small groups with a staff uh, member and talk over a problem terms, or examine, say, a chapter of a book very closely. It's a chance to say what you think or ask a curly question. And in a good tutorial, everybody gets involved. I've been at tutorials where an argument started that went on long after the class finished. In fact, some of them never get finished. Where do profits fit into all, to all this? I mean, in a way, I mean, uh, the best indication of future profitability is past profitability, isn't it? I mean, profits are both the, uh, the means to invest and uh, the carrot, don't you think? Yes, but I mean, investment isn't only out of re retained profit, is it? I mean, I enjoy lab work because you're on your own to put into practice what you've learned in lectures and you're dealing with the materials and the problems at first hand. If you really get stuck, there are always demonstrators to come around and show you where you're going wrong. They also get the chore of going through our lab reports, which we write up after each experiment. You're a bit too certain about some of these so-called facts. There's a, one thing about Elizabethan theatre... It's just, just the same for an art student, in a way. 
The tutors mark what you write, the essays and the research reports. Then they go through it with you. First, it's a bit embarrassing, but it is a chance to learn at first hand from their experience. And they don't just rubbish your opinions. Shakespeare in the essay, just how important was Shakespeare to the topic? Yeah, well, I think that was fairly important because that was one of the best ways we have of finding out precisely what went on in the theatre. It would have been quite useful if you could have used Shakespeare to point out some of the facts that we know from stage directions and from the things that are implicit in the text, such as the fact that there was much use made of the inner stage and the, oh. the balconies. Mm. Um, plays like Romeo and Juliet obviously require a balcony, so therefore we know mm. the actors must have used one in the theatre, and so on. Okay, Mandy, well, I think we've just about covered everything with this mm -hmm. essay. Um, I don't think there are any major problems that you need to worry about. So if you'd like to take it with you and uh, just look through the comments that I've written on it. It's really surprising the number of different ways they teach you here. Most weeks I come to this language lab to practice French. And one of my friends, who's a music student, gets lessons on the violin from a professional university tutor. The drama students spend time in a television studio working on a play. I'll call you back, all right? My wife. Really? Camera two, can you give me an MCU? The preferences of the And the law students have something called a moot court, where they can all practice being in a real court. The court is instructed to take account of them in section 23, subsection two. He can provide a more stable environment for the children to grow up in and he can provide a good standard of physical care. There's a study centre too, where you can watch teaching films, TV and slide cassette programmes on all sorts of subjects. And they've even got short courses on learning how to study, run by the counselling service. Otago has quite a few special or professional schools. They all involve practical and clinical work, where you get the chance to try out the theories you learn about in lectures. They're actually being taught by top professionals in their own field. There's a spring holding it out in an extended position, so it's quite likely that um, you he's ruptured an extensive tendon. Yes, I think that's a reasonable explanation. You can see the laceration over the top of the finger. 